We're here today recording the cast album for Cinderella. We're recording our great big stinking hit album. <laughs> it's incredibly special because our show is completely rewritten for us. And um, Danny Trube and David Chase have arranged and orchestrated this whole new version just for us. And we're getting to like commemorate it with an album for all of history. So it's, it's incredibly special. You're, you're going to be able to hear things that you remember, but you're also going to hear a whole bunch of new stuff. And you're going to hear stuff that you remember in a whole new way. Of course, I'm the only one in the company that, at 15 years old, sat in front of the television set in March of 1957. Yeah, I was in thrall. So we get to expand it and make it even more beautiful by using um, some of the trunk songs. And of course, Douglas Carter Bean's wonderful, wonderful new book. Interestingly, when Oscar Hammerstein was interviewed in 1957 after having done the TV show and they were talking about doing a Broadway version at that point, one of the things he said was, we will have to add more songs and more characters and more dances. So we have added more songs, more characters and more dances. The songs, of course, we can't write anything new, but we've used pieces of things that are in the Rodgers and Hammerstein catalog with completely different arrangements here and there or using things, we're preasing them in different ways. I defy anyone to pick apart what was before and what's been added because it's been um, uh, put together in a seamless whole and uh, I think uh, it will sound as fresh a score as ever before. Meet your prince, a charming prince. It's so easy to feel transported to another time working on this show, um, mainly because the, the sound that the orchestra makes, there's, there's 22 pieces, and I, I feel like it's this kind of lush sound that we don't hear anymore. There, there's a harp, there are oboes, there, there are these pieces that, that are not featured in, in many uh, Broadway pits anymore. All the voices are just so wonderful and, and brilliant, and it's, it's nice to hear an album that's sung by actual singers of, of this genre of, of theater. I think it's going to be different for people and exciting and something that they're just going to have to get their hands on. There were many, many hours of rehearsal, so it's not like you get a group of actors together and, and teach them these songs. We have been playing these songs and living these parts, and I think that's another reason the recording will be so wonderful. I have found her. She's an angel with the dust of the stars in her eyes. We are dancing, we are flying, and she's taking me back to the skies. In the arms of my love, I'm flying over mountain and meadow and glen. And I like it so well that for all I can tell, I may never come down again. The whole, uh, you know, time leading up to it, you are sort of thinking like, this is it. This is what's going to be preserved of my performance for future generations. And it's kind of daunting, but you know, all you can do is sort of come to it as excited as you can be and throw it out there like you were doing a show. Her neck is no whiter than a swan's. She's only as dainty as a daisy. She's only as graceful as a bird. So why is the fellow going crazy? Oh, why would a fellow want to What we're really listening to in this cast recording isn't just a series of songs. It's as if you were listening to a radio play or you were listening to a movie soundtrack where you were hearing the dialogue and the underscoring. And what they're giving us is so much greater an idea of what Cinderella was. 
That's what's fun for me. I always feel the most important part of making a Broadway cast album is to paint a visual picture of the show and every moment in the songs that we're singing so that someone that can't afford a plane ticket or a ticket to the show can listen to this and they can imagine what they're seeing. I was one of those girls that grew up listening to cast albums nonstop. In fact, that's pretty much all I owned and all I ever listened to. So it's so amazing to get to be the voice on one of those recordings now. I'm a girl, men go mad for love's a game I can play with a cool and confident kind of air. When I get my copy of the album, I, my, the first track I will listen to, I don't know if I would listen, I don't think I'll listen to my own first, but I can't, <laughs> I'd probably just start at the beginning and go like one, one pass all the way through. Probably in my own little corner. That sounds really selfish. The first one I was gonna say was actually Do I Love You? Um, and then I thought in all reality, probably in my own little corner. <laughs> Just to make sure it turned out okay. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what makes theater last. Is if, if it's a, if it if it's a plot that people like, if it's musical, if it's songs that people like. So I think that's what Rodgers and Hammerstein really knew how to do. I mean, they they wrote nine shows for Broadway, of which five or six are classics. So you know, you don't do that unless you know what what you're doing. It's incredible. I think they've really. I think Richard Rodgers and Oscar Hammerstein would be really proud. Impossible. For a plain country bumpkin and a prince to join in marriage And four white mice will never be four white horses Such fold-a-roll and fiddle-dee-dee of course is impossible But the world is full of zanies and fools Who don't believe in sensible rules And won't believe what sensible people say